She nodded. She protested. She decided she would never do what he said, and then she agreed to think about it. She took a sip of coffee. She had no memory of what he had just said. Erica had jumped back in time and also in space after touching the flamingos. And at other times, Erica jumped forward in time and into a different physical space. I'm really excited about some of the new characters that have not appeared in the podcast. And also, one of my favorite scenes is uh, in the book, uh, goes to a place that is in the podcast, but has never quite been explored before. The world of Nine Veil just like expands in front of you. It's uh, just, Night Veil is still there, Cecil is still there. Carlos is still there, but you have so many more access points to this amazing world and it just becomes even more full in front of you. And especially con to consume it in one book, in one story, is amazing. You know, the podcast builds over time and that has built over three years. But this is just like something you can hold in your hand that is this portal into this whole world, which is really cool. We also have here today Carlos, who is a scientist. Hi, Cecil. It's good to be here. An attractive scientist who is a good cook. <laughs> Stop. An attractive scientist who is a good cook who maybe can pick up some toothpaste and paper towels on his way home this evening. Already done. Also dog food. We've come so far in the three years that we've made this project. Uh, I think the first time that I talked with Joseph Fink about it, um, I borrowed like a $25 microphone from him at a coffee shop and went home and recorded the pilot and now here we are in this like really fancy audio studio in midtown Manhattan and I get to work with amazing actors and engineers and everything is very like top-notch professional. I feel really lucky that I get to be part of this thing that is going to be so just loved by this whole community of fans that we have um, especially because it's a podcast I feel that our work and this work lends itself to an audiobook format. So I'm just really excited to be part of it. Well, I think that we as a culture are ready to have queer characters that are not only the main character, but also where their queerness is not the 100% solely defining character trait of that person. Seeing representation and seeing yourself represented, it, it just feels like a reflection. And when you see that you have a reflection in fiction or in a story or in a book, um, you have more of an access point into that. And I think that is why our audience base is so diverse. <laughs>